Yo, what's going on guys? So the title of this video is not clickbait. I have decided to return my 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. Now let me explain why. Now over the past month, I've been using this exact computer right here a ton and I have just been blown away by it. it honestly has been a game changer for me in my current workflow. But recently I picked up the 16 inch model as well to test out for you guys and just for the channel in general. And I wanted to make sure I personally made the right decision between the 14 inch and the 16 inch. Now, I actually made a whole video where I kind of compare the two models and kind of talk about the differences between the two. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet. But in today's video, I wanna share with you guys my exact thoughts on why the 14 inch model wasn't the right choice for me, because honestly, I'm surprised. I thought the 14 inch was going to be the one for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, be sure to drop this video a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm making a lot of content around these new MacBook Pros lately and you don't wanna miss it. But let's jump right into this. So the first thing up, let's talk about the overall portability of these MacBook Pros, because obviously when you think about, okay, which model is more portable, obviously the 14 inch is lighter weight, it's smaller dimensions. So in theory, it is the best option if you need something that's really portable. But a key component that a lot of people don't talk about is once you actually reach your destination with your computer, which one is going to be the better suited option for you? Maybe things like a little bit better battery life as well as extra screen in real estate are actually key factors in that. And for me, that's exactly the case. So, you know, over the past two weeks, I traveled a ton with this 14 inch MacBook Pro. And although it was super easy to take along with me in a backpack and things like that, if I was sitting at a coffee shop for two or three hours or editing on an airplane or in the airport, the physical size of this was nice but the actual screen real estate of it honestly was kind of lacking because obviously I do a lot of video editing, which the more screen real estate you have, the better. I really wish I had a larger display in the 16 inch model since I've been using that and testing that out. It really is a significant difference when you're talking about you know having a larger screen and doing things like video editing, photo editing, multitasking, things like that. So although the 14 inch is physically smaller and easier to take along with you, once I reach my destination, I wish I had the actual screen size of the 16 inch. So for me, the trade-off is well worth it to have a little bit heavier and a little bit bigger of a machine to take with me. They both fit in my laptop sleeve and my backpacks. So really like what's an extra pound if once I get to where I'm going, I get a little bit more work done, a little bit more efficiently. So the next big deciding factor for me is just the overall performance between these two machines. Now I go more in depth and show exact examples in that other video that I was talking about, the 14 inch versus 16 inch video. So definitely check that out if you haven't. But these computers are spec'd out exactly the same. They are both M1 Max models. They have the same exact specs, memory, everything. And although they are identical, there definitely is a performance difference between the 16 inch and the 14 inch. Now, although you could argue the 14 inch M1 Max is plenty for me and honestly for most people out there. In fact, the Pro Chip is still probably more than enough for most people out there. I myself, I want the biggest and baddest thing with this chip. That's what I'm looking to invest in. This is a huge business purchase for me moving forward. I hope to be able to have this machine for multiple years. So for me, if I can have a leg up, the 16 inch does take the crown in the performance area. And also I like that it has the power mode options that the 14 inch model doesn't have. Again, I go more in depth in that in that comparison video. The next deciding factor is the battery life. Now, I do think the battery life is a little overhyped because a really nice feature on both of these is that they have the quick charge with MagSafe. So you can get over 50% battery back in under 30 minutes, which is just awesome. I think that's a huge win for pretty much everybody out there. And both these computers do have a low power mode. So if you are doing things that aren't as crazy intensive, or maybe you know if you are on a flight or something where the battery life is more important than performance for a period of time, it is nice that you have that option, but you do get a little bit better battery life on the 16 inch. It's not really a huge deciding factor for me, but if you're just looking at everything laid out together, it is nice to have a little bit better battery life on the 16 inch. But I do want to also say, if you really like the 14 inch or are considering this one, you'll be okay with the battery life on this one as well. I'm just really getting into the nitty gritty for the reasons for me. Now next up, a deciding factor for me is actually the fan noise difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch. And actually, I'm just kidding because really for me, the fan noise isn't an issue on either one. There's been a lot of talk about the 14 inch fan noise and all that stuff. It hasn't been an issue for me at all. The only time I've ever heard the fan noise on the 14 inch is when I'm actually physically exporting a video and then it turns off again. And if I'm on the 16 inch, the fans actually kick on during exports as well if I'm in the high power mode or the automatic mode. So 
Fan noise happens on both of them, and honestly, it's a non-issue on either. Both of them are very quiet. Every once in a while, they'll kick on if I'm exporting, but other than that, I've never heard a fan on a single time. Now, last big deciding factor for me between the 14 inch and the 16 inch is honestly just future-proofing myself and having a little extra reassurance. Now, I have had the 14 inch for the past month. I've used it every single day. I've used it how I normally would and how I think I would moving forward. But one thing about tech, and especially with computers that you invest in that you hope to have for multiple years. And this goes back to like 2010 when I was actually working at the Apple store and telling people what they should buy for themselves. You would always recommend getting a little bit extra memory or a little bit extra SSD storage, just things like that so you could future-proof yourself a little bit further down the line. So although I do think these are extremely similar, the fact that there is just a little bit of a performance edge on the 16 inch, and although I don't think there's any real concerns for thermals or throttlings on the 14 inch, that is with just a month testing. I can't be that sure sure a year down the line from now two years down the line with whatever type of cameras I'm shooting with at the time, whatever type of editing projects I'm doing. So although I would bet, I would say 90% sure I'd be okay with the 14 inch model, I am 100% sure on the 16 inch that I would be totally fine. And honestly, for me, just that little bit of reassurance and just knowing that I'm kind of future-proofing myself, having that little bit of a higher ceiling of performance, I think that is worth something. And for me, it might just be ease of mind, but it is a deciding factor for me. So those are really my deciding factors on the 14 inch versus 16 inch for my personal self. Now, if you're wondering what I would recommend for other people out there, here's kind of my thoughts. As I mentioned over the past couple weeks when I've been traveling and editing on the go quite a bit on my MacBook Pro, I've been doing video editing, photo editing, some design work, also, you know, just your everyday things like watching Netflix, YouTube, a bunch of admin stuff like emails, YouTube comments, things like that. And I can't think of a single scenario that I would have rather had a smaller device that was just a little bit lighter weight and physically smaller than to have a little bit heavier device that gives me extra screen real estate for whenever I get to my actual destination. So maybe if you're someone that the screen real estate doesn't really make that big of a difference to you, maybe you don't do video editing, maybe you just do some photo editing where you're doing one photo at a time, or maybe design work when you don't need a ton of screen real estate between you know, whenever you're hooked up to an external monitor, then the 14 inch could be a really good option for you. I know a lot of people really just have their MacBook on the go every once in a while, and then the other times it's closed in the clamshell mode and hooked up to a monitor. 14 inch could be a great option. But if you're someone like me that does need to utilize the actual screen real estate of their laptop, whether you're at home or on the actual go, I think the 16 inch model is the way to go. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I am gonna miss the 14 inch. I thought this was gonna be the one for me but the 16 inch, I think it just makes more sense. And especially after recording these videos and saying these things out loud, I think I did make the right decision. But guys, that's gonna be it for me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, will you please drop this video a thumbs up? If you're new around here, consider subscribing. It helps out me and the channel more than you can even imagine. But guys, I am out for now. I'll catch you in the next video very, very soon. Peace, guys.